Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. I'm a CPA with 25 years of experience and today I want to teach you about purchase orders. So a, pur a purchase order is documentation that you've already placed an order with one of your vendors. Um, it can actually serve as a legal contract once the vendor accepts it with their signature and sends it back to you. So why do you need to use purchase orders? Well, first off, it'll help to prevent duplicate uh, entries in your system. So each purchase order should have an individual number. As, you, as soon as you enter that purchase order in your system, it knows that purchase has been made and will help prevent you from placing a duplicate purchase. It helps you organize your incoming orders. So the purchasing department is generally separate from the receiving department depending on the size of your organization. The purchasing department produces the purchase order when the order is placed. A copy of that purchase order is sent to the receiving department. As they receive orders, they compare the goods received with the purchase order to make sure they received the proper items. Now again, very small businesses may not need this uh, organization, but a business even with maybe 10 or 12 employees, uh, communication becomes difficult and it's very nice for whoever's signing for the products to actually see that is exactly what was ordered. Uh, one very nice thing about purchase order is it helps you track available inventory. So as soon as you place a, a order, if you enter the purchase order into your accounting software and you have good accounting software that will handle this, the purchase order will show up in your system as inventory on order so that by looking at you know if you want to sell inventory you look and see how many units are available well we only have 10 units available but I see that we have another 20 on purchase order should those should be here shortly so it really helps to organize um, your inventory uh, now you will need software that actually can incorporate purchase orders QuickBooks online uh, you'll need the plus edition it's very good for this. Um, I will throw a link uh, in the description for 50% off for three months if you'd like to give QuickBooks Online a try. Um, another pur uh, purpose of the purchase order is it supports your invoices. So once you do receive an invoice from the vendor, you need to compare that to the purchase order to make sure that you're getting billed for exactly what you purchased, which is also what you received because your receiving department made that verification. So make sure that all of your communications with your vendor are clear. Um, and because you do compare your invoice to it, if you have a dispute with the vendor, you have some documentation to support you. You can say, here's the purchase order I sent you. I asked for 12 units. You only sent me 10 units. Here's our uh, the record from our receiving department. When they compared the purchase order to the goods received, they documented that we were 10 short. Um, so very good for disputing uh, the billings with your vendors. It gives you some written, a kind of a written trail um, to help support your claim. So how do you use uh, purchase orders? Uh, this is going to vary a lot by organization and a lot by the size of the organization. So as your organization gets larger, communications uh, gets uh, more and more difficult, and so purchase orders will be of more value. So let's talk about kind of what you would do in, say, a mid-size organization. So let's assume you have a separate purchasing department. That purchasing department is going to, uh, the process will be started when that purchasing department receives a purchase requisition from another department. So in this type of structure, not all departments are allowed to order goods themselves. They must go through the purchasing process. And so they initiate that process by filling out a purchase requisition. The purchasing department receives that purchase requ requisition and makes sure that it is properly approved. Once it is approved, it's the purchasing department that creates the purchase order. They're going to send a copy of that uh, purchase order to the vendor. The vendor will receive it. If they agree with it, uh, sometimes they'll sign it, send, you, send it back to you. Uh, that is actually then a written contract. Other times they may just, just treat it as an order, uh, create an invoice for you at that point, um, and record the, the order into their system. Uh, somehow the vendor should communicate to you though that they have received the purchase order. So as I said, they might sign the purchase order and send it back 
or they may just send you some sort of sales order, uh, which is kind of the, the sales department's equivalent of the purchase order. So once they record a sale, uh, they'll fill out an order, send it to you, showing you that the uh, purchase has been made or the sale has been made from their viewpoint. So what information should you include on your purchase orders? Uh, the most important thing you include, one of the most important things, is that item number two, the document title, because all of these documents look very, very similar. There's not much difference in the format between an uh, a, uh, invoice and a purchase order and a sales order and a receipt. They're all the same basic format with the same basic information, but they're used for totally different purposes. So each one of them are important, but it's extremely important that the person reading it knows what they're looking at. So make sure that you get that purchase order right on the face of the document. Uh, item number five is the purchase order number. Make sure that your purchase orders are numbered so that if you try to, to duplicate a purchase order, your system will tell you. So towards the bottom of your purchase order, this looks exactly like an invoice, right? It's got the uh, it's got the product, it's got the description, the quantity, the rate, the price. So again, it's very important that you write purchase order on the very top of this form so that you know what it is that you're looking at. So let's compare purchase order to some other very similar documents. So what is the difference between a purchase order and an invoice? So we just saw they look very much the same. Well, we know what a purchase order is, right? It's a it's a an order going from a customer to a vendor. An invoice looks similar, but is very different. It's a, a document sent from the vendor to the customer requesting payment because the goods have already been delivered. What's the difference between a purchase order and a sales order? So we mentioned a sales order already. So purchase orders are issued by the customer when they purchase something. Sales orders are issued by the vendor upon receipt of a purchase order, right? So it confirms among the vendor's own departments as well as they'll send a copy uh, to the customer that the purchase order has been received. And so the sales order will get uh, shipped around the vendor's departments, letting everybody know the sales order has been placed so that everybody can then accumulate the proper goods and services to complete the sales order. What's the difference between a purchase order and a receipt? So a receipt is very much like an invoice. It's sent by the vendor to the customer, but this is sent after payment is received. The invoice is the request for payment. The receipt is the confirmation that payment was received. And so that's it. That's what you need to know about purchase orders. Uh, again, I'm going to post the link to QuickBooks Online. You can get 50% off uh, for three months. My name was Tim Yoder. I hope you found this useful, and I look forward to seeing you next time.